Thank you for watching. Here I have a real treat for you today. Uh, inside this box is not a camera. There are two image capturing devices. Now these date back to the year 2000 and I liken the design to um, how the 1970s uh, 110 film cameras used to look. So let's open the box now. I'm going to delve inside. So I'm quite fortunate here. I've got a couple of these imaging devices, as you can see in their cases. And I have a remote control, just a single one. And guides in various languages. So th these are the days when nothing was available to download or on CD or DVD. It was all printed manuals. So I have quite a few here, uh, English and then all the various other languages. So let's put that to one side. Actually, a quick look at the, the manual show it's quite comprehensive, over 100 pages of information on how to use these imaging, image capturing devices. I have got some CDs here with software on, but not loaded on the computer um, as they're pretty old now. And a collection of wires, the standard USB wires. Um, there's some that output the video as well. So video and mono sound. And I believe in here, I have got a couple of lens uh, caps as well. So these are quite nice. They normally go on the lens, but I don't have those on there at the moment. And there's a built-in strap in that one. Okay, so let's put that to one side. So what we are looking at here is a three megapixel um, CCD sensor. Uh, there are various modes to interpolate that to a higher number, um, although I would probably just say stick with 3 megapixels for now. So a nice soft case there, which is kind of looked after it. Um, I'll put one down on there. I'll turn that around. So as you can see, it's got a flip screen. And let's just have a look at um, what this um, imaging device has got on it. So there's the dial here, which is the on and off. You've also got a zoom function here. And you can preview, you can have your camera record memos, I guess. Um, not too sure what that one is, but we've got, um, we can take a batch of um, shots with this mode. There's also a camera mode and one for setting stuff up as well. So this uh, vintage uses the smart media memory card. So let's just take that out. And that's what we were dealing with back then. So <laughs> quite, quite sort of big, um, but very thin, wafer thin. And uh, this is probably at uh, the limit, I think, of what the cards went to. So this is uh, 128 megabytes. So let's just uh, put that back in. It sort of goes in upside down. So let's just open that up. Um, you've got a uh, viewfinder here. So you're not going to see exactly what, you, what the camera is seeing because um, it's just to the side here of the lens. Um, but that is useful. There's also um, remote control sensors. So there's a sensor here and there's also um, a sensor in here. Um, there's microphone, there's flash, um, and then the various sensors to help um, focus your picture. And on the side, we have some connections here. So this is for USB and for the audio visual cable. Uh, there's also uh, adapter here for charging, or it may not be charging, it might just be to give power to the camera. Um, I, I only had um, the USB cable and I had the batteries 
I think I've got a standalone charger, but not, I don't think I've got anything that essentially goes into there. Okay, so the other interesting thing here is this was a true selfie camera as well because it's got a button on the front here and this will actually take a picture. So um, I would imagine that you could have just held the camera like this and take a picture and you wouldn't have to be trying to take it from, so that's really neat. And then you've got the strap um, and then probably a speaker, I think, in there. So there is an adjustment here um, if you need to wear glasses. So, um, so that's useful. So on the back here, there is the attachment uh, by the screw area where you can uh, fasten this to a tripod. Um, so that's that there. There's also some buttons in here, timer, a countdown timer. So you can press that. So there are um, there are modes on this. Um, there's there is a macro mode which is pretty good, and um, that is well worth using. So that's what that is there. Let's uh, let's power this on. I've got to warn you, my batteries aren't great on this. Um, they don't last very long. So let's try turning this on. Date and time first. So I just wanted to show you very quickly because I've got terrible batteries here that don't last any length of time. This uh, was actually very power hungry when the LCD was um, displayed like so. So let's close it up and the battery may last a little, a little bit longer. And you can see in here there's a full display um, with various information. And there we go, it's just turned itself off. So let's just take that out and try a different one. So these sort of devices were quite power hungry um, in their day and things improved obviously as time went on and uh, batteries became um, longer lasting, probably down to the electronics and the design of the later cameras. Haha, I called it a camera then, didn't I? Shouldn't have. Okay, so this is the image capturing device. And let's see. So this is a different battery I've put in. And yeah, it seems to be pretty good. So sorry I couldn't show you much more about this camera because of my depleted batteries. What's really strange is the batteries are showing 70% uh, charge and they seem to be charging more than that, but um, they seem to die off very quickly as well. So um, not great. And I wonder if I can source some new batteries to try. Um, that would be the best thing. But I thought it'd be an interesting video to make anyway, just to show you the sort of uh, cameras that we had in the very early 2000s. And this would have been quite a um, decent camera at the time. It still does take good pictures. Uh, only 3 megapixels, but 3 megapixels is probably fine for standard sort of print size photos. So uh, 6x4, maybe at a push 7x5, although you will start to see um, quite a bit of um, sort of grain um, it, if you go to sort of six uh, to 7x5. So uh, 6x4 for a 3 megapixel was probably your limit. Um, I did some travelling in the sort of mid early sort of 2000s and I had a 4 megapixel camera and that was that was great actually and uh, the sort of prints that I managed to get off that was superb so um, I would say that um, if you're looking at any old cameras and you want to go out and shoot with some old cameras maybe looking at ones that are sort of 4 megapixel upwards is the way to go there. Just going from the specifications then the video output signal was uh, NTSC or PAL. Uh, the battery is standard 3.7 volt uh, ba battery. So the CCD was just over 3 megapixels so um, probably 3 megapixels effective to take into account there. Um, the zoom lens was a, a f-stop of 2.6 to 3.4 and it was the equivalent in 35mm camera um, 
of 35 to 105 mil on the zoom part and um, we could obviously go quite um, close in macro mode so it does allow you I think to get to within a centimeter or over a centimeter away but um, that's pretty good so um, it's got an aluminium casing to it uh, the TFT LCD and it shoots various ISOs the auto I think is set at 150 so this sort of camera and the year of the camera would have meant that um, probably not very good indoors for shots but um, work much better outdoors where you have proper daylight and that was the same with a lot of cameras um, so the pixels as we mentioned was 3 megapixels and it did have a video mode and that was a standard sort of 320 by 240 at the time and the uh, the picture output was JPEG so um, that probably rounds up most of it um, internal memory of 8 megabytes and um, it did on release go to 64 megabytes but with a firmware update I believe you could have gone to the higher cards the 128 megabyte cards so um, that's a little bit about the camera and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching the video please can you like and subscribe and I shall dig out some more old cameras and bits and bobs in the future thank you very much and I will see you in the next one bye for now